Welcome to the 23rd part in this Python series for beginners and in this video we're going to be talking about classes. So in the last video we talked about objects and a little bit about classes but I didn't actually show you what a class looked like. So I'm going to just do a simple example in this video to hopefully illustrate to you exactly what a class is and give you a bit more of an understanding of what I mean when I say a class. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file here and I'm going to save it, I'll just call it classes or class and I'll save that and to define a class I use the class keyword which is just class and then you give it a name just like you would with any sort of function in Python I'll call this a uh, person for example and what a class is is basically it's an easy way to group together the functions and variables that you use a lot in Python and sort of contain that in a really powerful way which you can use time and time again uh, in a really sort of efficient way and it's very very easy to sort of access everything within that class many times which makes your programs really really efficient which is why object oriented programming is really good so let's go ahead and define a what, what I'm calling a function but it's actually called a method just because it's in a class but it's basically just a function and you define it in exactly the same way so let's just define a uh, name and I'll explain self in a minute but the name function is also going to take the name and all this is going to do is uh, return a list of the uh, letters in that name say so it doesn't have to do anything complicated it's just sort of to illustrate what class is and how I can write one so let's go ahead and save and run it and see what I get so we haven't actually instantiated the class yet so that's what I'm going to do now so I'm going to define a variable to put this particular instance of a class of the person class in so let's call it uh, Bob and I'm going to set it equal to person and what that does is it makes Bob what's called an instance of the class so now that we've done that we can access all the methods and properties properties are basically like variables but within a class so if you wanted to define a property you could say age equals seven for example and that would be a property and so it's very similar to how you define a variable outside of a class but now that we've instantiated uh, Bob we can use all the methods inside that class so we could do Bob.name and this name method takes uh, takes parameter name so I'm just gonna say uh, Bob Smith is his name and then so it's going to return the list of all the elements in his name which is what we told it to do so that's one example of how you can use classes and one good thing now that we've put it in a class is say we didn't just have Bob what if we had another person well we could say I don't know we say we have Jack and he's also a person so now we've got another instance of the class and what Jack can do is have the is be able to use the exact same methods that Bob could so we could do jack.name so now we can see that that does the exact same thing and it does it with a different instance of the class so, and we can have as many instances as we want so that makes it really really powerful and let's go back and add say say we've got an age variable like we like we had before uh, so it's called a property inside a class and let's say the, the whatever we assign here is basically going to be the default age for uh, a person it's just going to assume that they're 18 unless we tell it otherwise so now we can create another instance of this class sorry I'm gonna to have to save and run this first otherwise it won't have that property in it so now I can create uh, let's create another instance of this class so now we've got another instance of this class so it's our third instance 
and now it has the name variable. So we can access this uh, property. I shouldn't say it's a variable because it's really a property because it's inside a class. And we can just do that by using dot age, so just the name of that uh, property. So then we then it returns that value, which is really good. So what's good about this is if we wanted to change that, we could change uh, this age, and we could say le.age, we could say they're equal to 16, for example, and then if we had other instances, they can all have ages that are independent of each other, even though they sort of use the same class. So each of the instances of the class can have different values based on whatever you want. So if they're, you know, a different age, then they can both store that value, even though it's only got one age property. So it's used multiple times, which is really, really powerful, and it makes it really, really easy to reuse your code. So in the next one, we're going to be talking about inheritance, and it, I think it's a little bit of a more intermediate topic, but really, it's not too bad, I think. So uh, I'll see you in the next video.